The quilt that we've been making. I've been teaching you different techniques and tips along the way, but we've been making specific blocks for the Learn to Quilt quilt. So before we start doing the process of actually assembling the quilt, I want to make sure that you have all the pieces and parts ready. So the first lesson that we learned, the first block that we did rather, was the rail fence block. And so this is what our rail fence block looks like. For the quilt, you're going to need 12 of these and they should measure when they're unfinished eight and a half inches. After that, we learned all about the nine patch. And these nine patch blocks should measure about four and a half inches at this point and you'll need eight of them for the quilt. Then we started working on half square triangles. So we did a couple of different blocks with the half square triangles. And so these are making eight and a half inch blocks. So that's eight and a half inches before you sew them in. So when they're sewed in, they'll be eight inches finished. So this, you see where we have the half, in, half square triangles, half square triangles. Here's another one where we had the half square triangles here. And then we went over to the flying geese. So this was the block that we made with the flying geese. This is the flying goose. So this block again, before it's pieced in, should measure eight and a half inches or something close to that. Then we made the flying geese border. Now with the flying geese border, we assembled 10 of them together. And then in the upcoming segment, I'm gonna teach you about adding coping strips. Now when we add the coping strips, We'll be adding little ends to it, and then these accent coping strips. Then you'll trim these down to four and a half inches by 16 and a half inches. After we did the flying geese, we went on to learn about applique. So the first part of applique we learned was making cable borders. So this was the bias cable that we made, and we put this down with invisible machine applique. These, after they're all done and pressed and sized, these should measure four and a half by 32 and a half inches. Then we went on to hand appliques. So I taught you a couple of different techniques. I taught you the technique where I turned it over the polyester stabilizer, and then my friend Michelle taught you turning it over using the spray sizing in the Mylar template plastic. But at this point, you're gonna use the stitch to hand stitch this all down. So your applique will be done. When your applique is done, you'll press it, you'll give it a good steam pressing with a little sizing and trim this down to 16 and a half inches. And then we went on to paper piecing. So for paper piecing, you should have four of these little tulips and they should measure four and a half inches after you've trimmed them and taken off all of the paper. In the upcoming segments, we're gonna talk about the setting triangles, setting squares, and corner triangles. And then we'll start assembling our large quadri quadrants for the quilt. So you'll use one of your half square triangles or flying geese blocks with your rail fence, and then your setting triangles, setting squares, and corner triangles. Coming up next, we're gonna talk about coping strips. quilts. At this point you've probably made a few blocks. Hopefully you've been following along and you've been keeping up with as we're going and making the blocks and you'll notice that maybe all your blocks aren't all the sizes that they're supposed to be. Don't worry, it's common. Most people don't make the blocks the size they're supposed to be. We work so hard with our cutting and our scant quarter inch seam allowance but no matter how hard you try you're going to find that you can't be perfect. About 10 years ago, I took a class with Sharon Craig. She's a professional quilt teacher, lives in the San Diego, California area. Best teacher I ever had a class from. She was phenomenal. She had so much information to share and it was all really good, practical information that I use all the time when I'm working on quilts. And her lecture at the Guild was sets education. She was educating us on all the different ways to set your quilt, on point, straight set, medallion set, but then also about the colors that you use. But the one thing that she taught me that I will never forget was the information on coping strips. Everybody likes to laugh when we talk about that because we're all trying to cope with different things. Well, with this, you are. You're trying to cope with blocks that are not all the same size. 
I'm going to show you a few quilts here. And the first one I'm going to show you is a quilt that the friends in my bee made. So we've got about 20 ladies in the bee, and the idea is that everybody make 12 blocks, and then you give one of your 12 blocks away to different members in the bee. 12 different quilters. Not one of the blocks turned out the size they were supposed to be. They were all a variety of sizes. So instead of taking the blocks apart and thinking I was going to make them all perfect myself, instead I actually added fabric around the blocks and trimmed them all down to the exact same size. So on the quilt that I'm showing you here, this was a fall color quilt that we made, this block did not turn out the size that it was supposed to. So I added these green strips all the way around the block. I did not add just this little narrow strip. I actually added a one and a half inch strip all the way around. After I had all the blocks surrounded with a one and a half inch strip, I spray sized them really good and then went back and trimmed them all down to a perfect 11 inch size. So on this quilt, you see all these green strips going around. On the next block I'm going to show you, the same idea. Right here is we have the block with all these different strips. What you don't notice is that the strips on this block are actually narrower than the strips on the previous block that I showed you. And it's because this block turned out a little bigger. The other block turned out a little bit smaller. But when it's just that minor difference, you won't notice it. Your eye will adjust and you won't know that those strips were actually a different size. The next quilt I've got has got a different type of coping strip. Now, this is called a wonky coping strip. The idea here, same as with the other, is that the blocks are not going to turn out the size that you think that they all should. So with this, you actually add a two and a half or three inch strip going all the way around the block. Then you take your ruler and you tip it. So it's tipped and it's kind of wonky. This is a really fun way to um, square up your blocks, but I really, what I really love about the coping strips when the wonky setting is that you see so much more of the fabric. So on this block, I didn't know what color I wanted the quilt to be, so when in doubt, add more color. So I added lots of different varieties to the blocks. Now the next quilt I'm gonna show you is from my friend Cheryl took the class, my Learn to Quilt class. And when she first started taking the class, it was seriously the first sewing that she'd ever really done. So her blocks did not all turn out the size they were supposed to. So on her Learn to Quilt block, she made her rail fence blocks. They were supposed to finish nine inches. Cheryl's finished about eight and a quarter inches. That's a significant shortage from what they really needed to work in the quilt. So instead of panicking or redoing all the blocks, no. Cheryl added these yellow strips to the sides of the block. Then she was able to square them up to the nine inches that she wanted, and it adds so much to the quilt. I love how she's got the accent yellow here in the star blocks, and then she's also got the yellow coping strips here. Everybody thinks it's a design choice she made, and it was a design choice she made. We didn't need to panic. There was a way to make those blocks cope in the quilt. When we come back, I'm going to show you how to do these different types of coping strips. The first coping strip technique I want to teach you is the straight set technique. So to prepare for this particular episode, I went home and tried to find some orphan blocks. You know, those blocks that I'd made 10 years ago and never turned them into a quilt. It's really sad how many orphan blocks I have laying around. So this is an old block of the month that I taught that was all Christmas fabric. So a variety of Christmas fabrics. And they all turned out multiple sizes, as oftentimes piece blocks do. So you can see the variety of colors that I used. And on the blocks, you're now seeing the finished coping strips going all the way around. So this is a straight set coping strip. One more block, right? And you can see that I used a variety of green fabrics. Again, why use one fabric when you can use 10 fabrics? Always a better idea in my opinion. So now I'm gonna show you how I did this. So I first took strips and I took all of these different colors. So I went to my stash of fat quarters and I just pulled out green. 
I wasn't too particular about what shade or what color. I didn't want it too light. But other than that, just a large variety of colors. And then I cut them into two and a half inch strips. So I have a whole batch of two and a half inch strips. I took the blocks and I just started piecing those two and a half strips around. So started here, added the second one. Here's the third one going around till I had the fourth strip on the block. So now we need to square up the block. So I'm going to clean off my cutting table and keep this last one on the board. All right. For this, because these blocks are going to be bigger than 12 and a half inches, I'm going to use my 15 inch ruler. And I learned this technique from Sharon Craig. When you're trying to square up a block, one of the difficulties is keeping your ruler from sliding on the block. She just took a little bit of their basting spray, just sprays it a little bit on the back, not so much that, well, there's a little bit of fog, but not too much. Not too much fog in the air. And then when you put this down on the block, you need to be evaluating the block. So I'm looking here and I'm seeing, all right, so I can have one and a half inches of green here, one and a half there. This block actually is going to turn out really nice. I'm going to have one and a half inch of the green going all the way around. And then I'm going to stick that down with the basting spray. Going to square it up to 15 and a half inches. And because I added that basting spray to it, I can just turn the ruler and the block is going to come with me. And now I have a perfect 15 inch block. This coping strip technique is called the wonky strips. My friend Ginger likes to call them the kitty wampus strips. I don't know what kitty wampus means, but wonky I think I can do. So this block again, I started it from a block of the month probably 10 years ago, went to my orphan block box, and I found these purple and green blocks. So with this, I wasn't sure what color to add for the coping strips, and I got to thinking about the color wheel, and on the color wheel, there's green, purple, and yellow. So I thought yellow or gold would be a nice option. And in my stash, I found this fabulous fabric that has purple and green and gold going all around. It's such a great variety of color. I thought one fabric would be enough for the coping strips on this particular block. Um, that also leads me to a little Lately, people have been cleaning out their stashes. They want to maybe minimalize what they have. I do not ever think you should minimalize or clean out your stash. You never know. I'll bet you I bought this fabric 10 years ago, and it's been in my stash waiting all this time to be used on this quilt. So with this wonky strip coping technique, you're going to see that the strips are going to end up being large on one side and the smaller. So the blocks are actually tipped. And I like that not only can they be tipped, but they're going to also be able to be tipped in the opposite direction. Just add more interest to the whole block. So again, we started by adding one strip, the second strip. Then we had three strips going around. And there it is with the four strips going all the way around. Now I'm going to show you how to square this up wonky style. Going to use my ruler. Still got a little bit of that sticky left on it from last time. And now instead of trying to have an even amount of the strip all the way around the block, I'm actually going to tip it. So I need to make sure that from the edge of the ruler to one of the points on the block is never less than a half of an inch. You want to have a half of an inch that's going to give your, root, your block enough to float inside the wonky strips. So all the way around, I'm going to try and position it so that there's approximately a half inch going all the way around. Going to push it down. It's still got a little bit of that sticky on it. Whoops. Cut. There.
Now this block is tipped to my left. The next block I'm going to tip to my right. So this one was that way, so now I'm going to go this way. Again, position it so that the block itself is at least a half inch from the edge of the ruler. So I'm going to have a half inch, so my block is going to be able to float a little bit. And cut. So now you see that I have two blocks and a lot of scrap fabric. And they're actually going in opposite directions. When the time comes for me to put this block together or these blocks together into a quilt, I might actually leave them right together. I might leave, put a sashing strip between it, maybe a dark purple, a dark green, something to add some more color to it. But doing the wonky strip is really going to make your block very cool. All the cool kids are going to think that you've made the best blocks in the class. The final type of coping strip I want to talk to you about is what I would call a hidden coping strip. So the first ones that I showed you with the green and the gold, we were actually adding an accent color going all the way around the block. So on this one, we added the green accent color. With this one, we added that beautiful gold accent color. Well, these blocks actually have a white background to them. They're really large blocks. And I just thought maybe I didn't need to add a color. So instead of adding a color to these, I'm going to pick up the background color and add that all the way around the strips. So in this case, the white background with the white coping strips, those coping strips become hidden. You don't really even know they're there. Nobody would ever know that you were trying to actually square your blocks up all to the same size. Instead, it's just a white strip going around the blocks. And it also gives a really cool effect. These blocks actually will be sort of floating when they're set in the quilt. use a neutral colored thread. Oh, neutral colored cotton, that's all I need. No, it's not. There are some times that you really need to try to match the thread color to the fabric. So for instance, when we did this block, this just needed a neutral color thread. I just used a taupe color thread to piece it all the way around. It's a warm colored block that was the perfect thread. But when I went to do the block where I was putting on the hidden coping strips, and it has the white strips going around, so here the white and the white are going to be touching. If I had done this with a taupe colored thread, when it got done all quilted, you would actually see that taupe colored thread showing through here. So any time that you're doing a block that especially if it has solid fabrics, you're going to want to try to match your thread choice, especially for lights and darks. So on this, when I pieced this block, I pieced it with a white thread because I knew that I was going to have a white and a white coming together. And then when I put on those hidden coping strips, white to white, I used a white thread. Same idea when I was doing this Amish quilt. So with this Amish quilt, I actually used a black thread because look at all the times that the black piece goes to the black piece. So I used the black throughout the piecing of this quilt. So don't just assume that a neutral colored thread is what you need. There's many times that you actually do need the color thread that your quilt is predominant whenever they're going to match. I hope that helps. to the quilt that we've been making. A few episodes ago, we were working on the flying geese for the Learn to Quilt quilt. So these are the flying geese that we made. And when the flying geese were made, they are not the right size. They're all, they actually, I planned it to turn out a little bit smaller so that you could add coping strips to the sides of the block to make them the exact size that we needed them to be. So for the quilt that I'm working on now, these are the flying geese that I made earlier. 
And now I'm gonna add hidden coping strips to the right and left side. So I just added a two inch strip to this end, a two inch strip to this end, pressed them out. Now I'm gonna trim those down. Oh. So now it's trimmed. And now I can add an accent coping strip. So here's the hidden coping strips, the same color as the background fabric. The red coping strip is the accent coping strip. Now I can square the block up to its perfect size. And in this case, that would be a 14 and a half by 16 and a half inch strip. So I'm gonna again, look at the ruler, kind of analyze the way the ruler is on the block. This block is supposed to finish four and a half inches. That makes two and a half inches, the middle. So I'm gonna put the two and a half inch ruler right in the middle of the flying geese. And then from end to end, I need it to be 16 and a half inches. So if I have about three quarters of an inch here on the right side, and about three quarters of an inch on the left side. Straighten everything out. Cut on the right. Cut on the left. And this kind of time we can't just spin the ruler. We have to actually turn the block around. Now we can tuck the block right into that 16 and a half by 14, four and a half. Measure.